So here I am today doing a video to review the Metro Monger and this is made by Green Room 136 and um, my most recent video I reviewed the Green Room 136 Rainmaker which is a pack that let me grab it so this guy is what I currently use as my daily carry made by the same company made with the same exact materials and basically it's sort of the small, well, think of it as sort of the little cousin to the Rainmaker here. So let's do the same thing we always do, which is uh, let me just tell you a little bit about this bag and the things that I don't love about it and then get into the things that are great about it. Much more great than there is about it that's not great. So this guy is actually a crossbody bag. It's not a messenger bag. And if you take a look at it, it actually has the look of more like a soft-sided briefcase. So in my mind, it looks a little bit more like this. This is the um, a Patagonia bag, and it's called the Transport 26. It has sort of that same look to it. It doesn't have a messenger bag. It has a little bit more of a refined look to it. But I do think that this has a more sort of briefcase-y look to it rather than a messenger bag look as opposed to something like this Timbuktu up here, which is clearly a classic sort of messenger bag look to them. Um, and so, you know, when you look at these two things side by side, you can also see that the Metro Monger here is quite a bit smaller than this 26 liter Patagonia, right? And in fact, this is only nine liters. So it's a tiny bag. And one of the things that I think I was a little bit fooled by is when you see this online, it actually gives the appearance of being like a regular size messenger bag. Even though it's not like Rainmaker, I mean, it's not like uh, Green Room 136 says that it's anything but a small bag. I don't know what it is. It just fooled me into thinking that it was much bigger than it was. So if this is a crossbody bag, you wear it like so. And I want you to note too that it's sort of in a diagonal across my back here, this is how you would carry it. You wouldn't be carrying it off to the side and you wouldn't be carrying it more flat. It really does its best when it's across the body in a diagonal form. It feels really secure on there and comfortable, which is great. And then to take it off, it's relatively easy because you can unclasp this quick release buckle and there you have it, click it back all together again. All right, so, um, Let's talk about the things that don't work so well with this bag. First and foremost, as you all know at this point, I don't love rain covers. So the whole point of having a rain cover like this is so that if it rains, water doesn't go through your zipper, if it was closed, it doesn't go through your zipper and then get all your stuff wet. Um, and while that is true, the one thing that is not great about these kinds of this type of arrangement having a zipper cover is that it makes it very difficult to unzip things because the zipper basically is behind this flap. Now it's not so bad in this situation when you're not really trying to turn a corner. All you're trying to do is straight go straight across. You can imagine this is much more difficult when you're looking at a backpack where the zipper has to actually go around a corner and then down the sides as well. That's when the rain covers really get in the way. So it's not nearly as bad with something like this Metro Monger here because the Metro Monger only has pretty much straight across zippers. So when we take a look at the one that's on the top here, you can see that it has a slight, it is gonna go slightly down in either direction. And it definitely gets in the way. You wanna, if you really wanna open this up wide, you're gonna have to flip this guy out of the way to get down there. But the reality is, even if I didn't unzip it all the way, I could easily get access to the contents of this and I can see down to the bottom because it's not as deep as a backpack. So it's not as critical that there are zipper covers on here, but I'd rather not have zipper covers rather than having zipper covers. The other part of it is that if you really um, want to keep these things weatherproof, one, you probably shouldn't go out in the rain if you can avoid it, but if you have to go out in the rain, then you should have a cover that goes over the entirety of this bag. That's gonna do a much better job than just these simple zipper covers. The other thing that's a little odd here, as you will see, 
We have zipper covers in two places, going into the main compartment and also going into this front pocket area. But we don't have a zipper cover in the area where I would expect that if you're worried about water getting in, you would worry about water getting into the place where you have your laptop. And so it's a little bit funny that the area that would normally contain the laptop, this is a padded compartment just for the laptop, doesn't have a zipper cover to it. All right, <clears throat> so enough on zipper covers. The other thing that is, again, it's not the, the fault of Green Room 136. It is a little bit too small for me. I thought this was gonna be something that I could use as an alternative to a daily carry backpack. But if you take a look at the size of the backpack, all right, so this is, I think it's a, a 26 liter pack or whatever it is. You can see that it's twice the size of the Metromonger, right? And so there's no way that you can ask this Metromonger to carry what a daily carry backpack would carry. It's silly. So for me to sort of mark it against Metromonger, uh, it's not so much that it's a criticism of the Metromonger as much as I would love it if Green Room 136 would make a little bit bigger one. So make like an 18 liter bag that scales up and can easily fit a 15 inch laptop and basically all the stuff that I use that I bring with me on a, in a daily carry bag, then it would be awesome. Now it wouldn't fit as well because the one beauty of this tiny little bag is that it fits across your back really comfortably because it's so small. And because it's so small, you can't pack it up with so much stuff that it becomes unwieldy and uncomfortable. The actual shoulder strap itself also is a wee bit problematic. I think it's a little bit too complex for its own good. You have a choice actually when you purchase this to get a cam buckle type of situation, which is similar to what you see on a Timbuktu. And with a cam buckle, what happens here is that this mechanism right here, you can shorten the length of the webbing and then, and then you sort of snap down this cam buckle, which locks it in place. And then if you want to take it up over your head and the webbing is too short, then you flip the cam, you lengthen out that piece of webbing, and then you bring it up over your head. That probably, in my mind, is the most elegant of all the solutions. Um, I think what Patrick was trying to do here with this, uh, the Metromonger was try to make it easier for you to shorten the length. And so he has this sort of strange cam buckle situation here, which it does run pretty smoothly. I mean, you can shorten and lengthen it very easily. The problem is that in order to keep it at that length, you need to slide this up so that it locks up against this buckle area. Otherwise, it's just gonna slide out really too easily, okay? But here's the thing, in my mind, if you're gonna have a quick release buckle, then you don't really need to make it so easy to lengthen or shorten this length of webbing. I would have just gone for a simple ladder lock situation here where I sort of set it to whatever length is good for my body and then leave it at that. And every time I need to take this off, or it, it, I either lift it up over my head or if it's too hard to lift up over my head, maybe I have a, a hat on or something like that, then I would just use the quick release buckle to detach it and take it off that way. So I'm not sure what problem, it feels like this is trying to solve too many problems here. And as a result, it's not super elegant and it doesn't work super well. Um, I really do wish now that I had gone for the cam buckle um, arrangement rather than this one. But this strap itself, I mean, let's not even, let's ignore the whole mechanism that keeps it uh, together here. This strap is awesome. It is so comfortable. It's super wide. It has just enough cushioning to it. It has a breathable back to it. It's tough as nails. It really is a joy to use this. So um, let's talk about the things that are great about this bag. First and foremost, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that if you take a MacBook Pro, the most recent version of the MacBook Pro 13 inch, which is what I have here. So this is like a 2017, 2018. It fits not a problem into this back area. And I know that there's a lot of online discussion as to whether or not it does fit. It does. Okay. So obviously I don't have a cover on my MacBook Pro, but even if I did, I would imagine I'd be able to slip it in there. It's got about a good, you know, half an inch on all, all around this thing. So it should be able to accommodate a cover, which is ugly. I don't know why you'd put a cover on your MacBook Pro. And then if you take a 2017 MacBook, or what am I saying? 
iPad Pro. This is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I have a very thin small cover on it. It's not the keyboard case. It's just a, a, a back basically. This guy also fits in here. It's a little bit tighter, but it works. Okay, so I can fit both devices. I just can't fit them both at the same time very easily in this padded spot. Oh, that does remind me, there is one thing that's not great uh, in terms of this padded compartment. It is padded on the back here and it's padded, there's foam in between the main compartment and the area where you would put your laptop here. But there is, strangely, there's no padding on the bottom here. So if you were to drop this bag onto the floor, it would actually make contact with the bottom edge or whatever edge of your MacBook Pro and could potentially damage it. So you have to be really thoughtful about putting this thing down because there's not a lot of protection on the bottom here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slide in my MacBook Pro here. We're gonna go ahead and fill this thing up as we take a look around it. And then we're gonna go into the main compartment. And in the main compartment, you can see here that we have a large open pocket here. Now what's unfortunate is that this Metro Monger, like I said, I'm, to keep saying this, it's kind of sad, is really too small and it doesn't accommodate a file folder. It would The file folder would stick out and the tab would get damaged. And even if I just put in a letter sized piece of paper in here, that too would probably get damaged in the process. So you really, it, I mean, it does fit in there, but oh boy, taking it in and out, you'd probably, the edges, the corners would get damaged in that process. And then you can see here we have a couple of pockets in the front and then the rest of this is just a big open space and in fact it does accommodate, not too bad, my camera insert. Camera insert gets a little squished when it goes in there but it would be able to hold my cameras and I think that would be, that's really handy. This would be a great sort of weekend camera bag. Uh, going on a hike you'd be able to swing this thing around, get, get your camera equipment out, take the picture, throw it back in, throw it onto your back. Great, it would be awesome to use it this way. And then let's go to the front. Again, the beauty of this front pocket here is that it has its own volume here. And as a result of having its own volume, you can really pack things in to the main compartment and not have it take away from the volume here of this compartment. In fact, I haven't been doing that. So let me go ahead and just pack this all up again. I'm gonna put my wallet here in one of these two divided pockets. I'm gonna put my cell phone, actually I'll probably keep my cell phone out there. I'll put my sunglasses into here. Um, I'll throw all of my bags. So this has dongles, cables, meds, etc. Chuck those into the main compartment here. I can put my receipts into the larger pocket in the back there. Okay, and then in the front, one of the things I don't really love about this, and you can see it here, is that the organization here, the organization panel in the front isn't super great. These two pockets here are actually really kind of small. Now, they will accommodate my iPhone, but they won't accommodate my wallet, which is a huge bummer. And then if I take my battery back up, it squeezes in there as well. It's a little bit tight, right? I would have rather them, if you take a look here, look how fat these pen slots are. They're about twice as fat as they need to be. And if I could actually subtract away a little bit from these pen slots and add them to these two pockets, I'd much prefer that. So there'd be a little bit more room for me to be able to put in things like a hard drive, battery backups, even my wallet. Okay, so let me go ahead and slide my pencil, Apple Pencil, and a pen into here. And I don't know, these cards, I'll just chuck those into the bottom there. So you can see that it really, it carries all my stuff except for file folders, which is a huge bummer. So uh, again, the one thing I haven't fit in here also is my water bottle. So. I'd have to go thirsty if I'm using this for the day. All right, so I go ahead and toss this thing on. And like I said, super comfortable. Love the shoulder strap. And you can see it on me. Diagonally across, just like that. Super comfortable. Easily I could carry this thing all day without too much of a problem. It's not carrying, it's carrying pretty much all the stuff except for 
a water bottle. So it's really the, the it carries the weight pretty nicely for such a tiny little bag. Um, if only, if only it would fit file folders, I'd be the happiest man ever. All right, so there was one thing I forgot to mention, and you can see that I've actually attached it to the Metromonger, which is there's an additional security strap here. So if you're really moving along, or hey, quit sneezing over there. If you're really moving along, maybe you're cycling, motorcycle, whatever it is, and you want that extra level of stability, they have this extra piece here that comes up and attaches. So you can see it runs under my arm and then clips right there with a spring clip to the Metromonger, one of the multiple D-rings that are on the Metromonger itself. It is adjustable, so if you're a bigger dude, you can actually stretch that out quite a bit, or completely removable. And as you saw in my previous part of this video, I didn't have this on here because I never use it. Okay, so pretty easy though to unclip it like so, and then you can swing around the Metromonger, get access to your stuff, swing it back around in this way, find that little dangling tail of yours, click it together like that, and you're off and running. Take a look at my other videos. Um, if you're interested in looking at the Rainmaker, it's uh, go to the video right there. Otherwise, I, asked, I have a whole bunch of videos on messenger bags. You can go there, and if you don't do that, at least subscribe right there. Thanks, folks. Bye.